So in this video, uh, I'm talking about you know why you should start with no code. Uh, meaning that if you are an absolute beginner, you, you may be working in a in a, some other field, or you may be a student, or you're just starting out. Uh, let's say you are transitioning, or like you like just like to learn something, or or just like to try your ideas. Like you may have an idea for a website or an app, and you want to just do it by yourself as a hobby, or you might be even more serious and you know make it as a side hustle. Uh, or you might be like let's say you want to make it as a career so who uh, who you are you are in this list like you are a beginner you are an entrepreneur or you know you, you want to make web development as your career there is no wrong in starting with no code so what I mean by no code is uh, like this like a platform like Wix so you can just sign up there and uh, start creating a your own website and I know it's you know it, it is limited for in the free account it, it comes with a subdomain and you are just going to see drag and drop page building and it's actually not programming right and it's not actually web development but it gives you an idea it gives you an idea of what is a header what is a hero image what's a footer and what is a sidebar and you know typography uh, colors and other elements and components and utilities as well so if you are um, starting out you can start with this type of platforms i would say you know wix uh, improved a bit a lot i guess like um, i I'm using it for a few few years, but I focus more on WordPress and Drupal and other open source platforms. But for total beginners, I would say Wix is okay. Uh, you can try with your own personal site or something that you like to just to practice. It doesn't have to be a real website. Or you could do something for your friend or family member and you know those who are not going to pay you anyway so like you can just design the website and show that to them and if they want to you know if they want to make it uh, uh, what do you call that like if you, they want to use it and then they can get rid of the subdomain they can start paying a monthly fee for it and there it starts and the other side you can go with this like Elementor. This is from Elementor's homepage. It is based on WordPress. So WordPress powers what, uh, SAP now in 2021. It, it powers more than 40% of the internet. So uh, so that is around 40% um, of the websites uh, are built with WordPress. And Elementor powers, I guess, more than 5 million uh, active installations there. So there are a lot of people, even big corporations or even like, you know, seasoned developers uh, use Elementor or WordPress. So uh, that's absolutely fine. And this is just one example. You can use the native Gutenberg uh, editor or DV and there are many page builders available there. So you can use uh, any one of them. So the point here is uh, you can get started with uh, what you already have like these are free you can just download and install it in your laptop uh, and then just give it a try and then once you get familiar with it or once you get serious with it then you can uh, push it to live like you can make the site live let others see your work and that's another step or if you want to have you know structured data like what WordPress or Wix does is uh, they don't have structured data um, meaning like uh, for example if you want to have a like a bookstore or if you want to build a classic movie app so if you are going to add movies in WordPress or Wix uh, you have to add some extra fields some maybe some extra plugin or something to add the uh, you know the movie name who's the director actor 
uh, the cast and crew of the movie when it is released and the, what's the average ratings or the genre of the movie. So there are a lot of information to add and that's what we call it as a structure. So if it's a movie, a movie will have a certain structure, certain uh, let's say elements or certain information associated with it, right? And if it's a book, it has some different uh, stuff, like you know, the book has uh, its own number, uh, maybe number of pages, and what is the category of the book, uh, who's the publisher, who are the authors, what's the, you know, whether it is a first edition or uh, the, the number of editions. So these are the stuff associated with books. And maybe if it's something else, it's, it, and the list goes on, right? So this is the structured data. So if you want to build something with structured data, you can try Drupal. Uh, I would say the learning curve, you need to learn a, a little bit of like, you need to watch at least some tutorials or read something just to understand how to create a new content type or uh, how to get started with Drupal. It's not uh, as simple as Wix or WordPress, but uh, it is best. I mean, if for building a structured data, you can go with Drupal or either Strapi. But now Drupal has a layout builder within itself. Like in the core, it, it, have, it comes with a layout builder. So what does it does for you? You, you install you know, Drupal and you can start using enable the layout builder module and then you can get started with it like you create your content type whether it's a book movie or whatever and then add your fields and there you go like you got a website and it is structured so this allows you to search uh, and create a list like drupal comes with views module so you can create your own view for what you want to show like you want to show a list of movies you can if you want to show a, a list of books and that can be searched so you can do it, uh, let's say in a couple of minutes with Drupal. So, and you can customize the layout as well. And it comes with a variety of themes and mostly, uh, uh, what do you call that? Like mostly Drupal is more targeted on, you know, it, it's not just a content management system. You can call that as a framework. So it allows you to build whatever you want. You can make it as a e-commerce platform or you know, like a content hub, you want to store different forms of content and access it uh, for your mobile app or something. And other thing to note, if you are, uh, you can start uh, all these stuff that I mentioned, like WordPress or Drupal are open source and they use PHP. So there is a com common thing that you don't have to use PHP because people are saying like, you know, uh, especially in the tech communities, uh, everyone is uh, will maybe you may uh, get some a bit of discouragement. They may say you should go with uh, JavaScript. You should learn something else. Go with Ruby on Rails. Learn this, learn that. There are so much stuff to learn. There's no you know there's no full stuff to learning. It's always uh, an ongoing stuff. There's always work in progress. And every day there are new stuff get added to it. Like uh, every every libraries, every framework, every language has its own updates. And so, uh, as a beginner, you just start with no code. Like uh, you don't have to write any code, and you just build something and show that your work, show your work to others, and keep practicing it. And then you can start with you know learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then you can, by the time you learn JavaScript, you are already you know you you could grasp the other programming concepts like you can go with uh, PHP, Python, or Ruby and Rails, or any other framework or any other language that you like. And that's it for this video. And I hope you get some some idea out of it. And I, uh, you know, this is purely my opinion. If you are uh, just starting it out, you watch some other, uh, you know, developers' opinion as well. And I, as I always say, let others give you suggestions and advice. And but the decision should be yours. And also, there is nothing wrong in starting with no code or, uh, you know, going with 
the traditional HTML, CSS, and JavaScript way as well. So whichever works for you, that's fine. But don't be overwhelmed. Start slow and learn one skill at a time and practice it. Keep practicing and keep sharing your work from day one. You can go with the 100 days of code challenge and you know, especially in Twitter and uh, there, are, there are communities out there, there will be developers uh, who are just like you starting. Uh, they will be uh, gladly, you know, give you some tips and advice and you can also go with uh, platforms like Free Code Camp where you can get some tips and tutorials from other developers as well. Okay, that's it for this.